In this episode, we're going to dive headfirst into the world of internet trends, separating fact from fiction and debunking some of the most popular fads you probably stumbled upon online. But it's not all skepticism and debunking. We're also here to reveal which of these trends are not just hype, but genuinely worth trying out. Let's start with the first one, micro workouts. So micro workouts are a popular fitness trend, focusing on short, convenient exercise sessions integrated into daily routines. I'm actually a fan of this trend because micro workouts closely resemble my exercise snacking concept, which I introduce in my book, The Energy Paradox, where I recommend small amounts of activity throughout the day in short bursts, in short exercise snacking. Now, this is all about using what you've got from utilizing your environment and available resources, such as taking the stairs or using a chair for squats or lunges. These are short, adoptable exercises that are a practical way to enhance strength, mobility, and overall fitness within a busy daily schedule. And I'm all for that. In fact, I'm happy to see that many people have recognized that my concept of exercise snacking has some real merit. So thanks very much, TikTok. It makes it easier for people to prioritize their health and well-being, so I'm all for it. So have an exercise snack. If you want to call it a micro-workout, so be it. That's a good TikTok trend. How about number two, mouth taping? Now, for those of you who don't know, mouth taping is a practice where individuals use specialized tape to seal their lips during sleep to encourage breathing through the nose. Now, there's a lot of good things about nasal breathing. It turns out that nasal breathing is really the best way to humidify the air you breathe before it gets into the lungs, whereas mouth breathing does nothing to that. It all has to do with circulating in through your nasal passages to pick up water vapor. The second thing that nasal breathing does that has been shown is it limits the actual stress response. Animals, humans who breathe through their nose actually have a much lower stress response than people who breathe through their mouth. And if you think about it, breathing through your mouth is kind of the last thing you do when you're exhausted running. And that's just basically saying, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm about to die and I'm on my last breath. And there's some actually very good controlled studies in human athletes forcing them to breathe through their nose to improve VO2 max. So there is actually something to this. Now, it will reduce snoring, particularly if you're a mouth breather. And so there's a lot of potential benefits to mouth taping. It can also improve oral health because if you are a mouth breather, you're going to dry out your oral cavity and have risks of dental issues such as cavities, but more particularly gum diseases. Plus, there's nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night with a dry mouth, which is definitely a sign that you probably mouth breathing at least for part of the night. Now, the big problem with mouth taping is true sleep apnea. Now, sleep apnea is a very real thing. Now, if you have the type of sleep apnea where your tongue falls backwards into your throat, which is a very common type, it's quite possible to worsen the flow of air if you tape your mouth shut. So if you're going to do this, or if your partner tells you that you snore and you snore loudly, please get yourself a sleep apnea evaluation before you try out this trendy TikTok trend of mouth taping. Buyer beware in this case. It's like we watch these commercials for cars that are driven wild. And at the bottom, it says professional driver on a closed course. Do not attempt this at home. 
This is one of these TikTok trends where there should be a warning, warning, professional sleeper in a closed bedroom situation. Don't try this at home without proper evaluation. All right, number three, the cabbage soup detox. Now, the cabbage soup detox is a short-term, low-calorie diet plan that primarily revolves around consuming homemade cabbage soup. It's often used for rapid weight loss because the soup is quite low in calories and high in fiber, which can help create a calorie deficit and it can shed excess pounds. So far, so good. Now, people claim it can help eliminate toxins from the body due to the high fiber content and the diuretic effect promoting urination. Well, spoiler alert, when you're on a calorie restricted diet, you should understand that most of the toxins that we consume are stored away in our fat cells where they are pretty much harmless. That big giant tuna or swordfish has toxic levels of mercury, and yet he's big and giant and certainly swims very hard because that mercury is safe in the fat cells. When you go on a rapid weight loss program, you release those heavy metals and toxins from your fat cells. And your liver has lousy phase one and phase two detoxification enzymes, number one, and number two, your liver cannot detox heavy metals. Instead, it passes them into your bile. You excrete them into the intestine where you reabsorb them. So the idea that a cabbage soup diet is a detox diet is exactly the opposite. It is a retox diet and should be kept that way. Now, I've actually posted for the first of the year a four-day cabbage soup diet as a reset. But let's reset the facts. This is not a detoxification diet. Quite the opposite. Okay, number four. Oh, this is fun. Lemon and protein in your coffee. Now, if you're looking to add something to your diet following a workout, a heavy strength training workout, then you probably know that your muscles are quite receptive to accepting protein from your diet for refueling and rebuilding muscles. So there's nothing really wrong with putting a scoop of protein powder in your coffee, providing that you wait about 20 minutes after your workout and get those muscle cells ready and then have your protein powder. But buyers beware of protein powder. Remember, our ancestors did not have protein powder. They had whole foods like meat, like fish, like chicken, like eggs, and even plant protein-rich plants as the sources of their protein. What that meant for our ancestors is that the protein in these foods was broken down very slowly in the process of digestion and absorbed as individual amino acids. The problem with protein powders, among other things, is they've done all the work for you. This is pre-digested food, and our body is not designed to handle pre-digested food. The second thing that you should realize is that the vast majority of protein powders that we eat do not turn into muscle protein or bone protein. Instead, they are converted into sugar. Why? Because we have no storage system for protein. But we got a great storage system for sugar. It's called fat. And all the research shows that the vast majority of the protein powders that you ingest do not go towards muscle maintenance or muscle repair or muscle building. They go into making sugar. So buyer beware. Now, lemon water and lemon coffee are popular trends believed to alkalinize the water, countering coffee's acidity. 
the amount of hydrochloric acid in your stomach normally is so massively higher than the amount of acid in coffee or the amount of alkalinity that you get from drinking lemon water, research has shown it's absolutely ludicrous to think that you're going to change anything. And you should realize that our body blood pH is kept at a very narrow window. And you could consume all the alkaline foods in the world and you will not impact your body's pH. Sorry about that. Good news is the Italians take a peel of lemon and squeeze it into their coffee and drop the lemon peel in. Why in the world do they do that? Well, the polyphenols in lemons peel are extremely good for you. And lemon peel has a fantastic detoxing compound called D-limonene. And I use that in one of my liver support products and recommend it to my patients for improving phase one and phase two liver detoxification enzyme systems. So that's why they squeeze the lemon in their coffee. And besides, it gives them nice flavor to the coffee. So lemon peel, yes, lemon water, please. How about number five, adrenal cocktail. Now, what is it? Well, the adrenal cocktail on TikTok trend is all about creating a beverage that supposedly offers various health benefits. It typically includes ingredients like lemon juice, orange juice, coconut water, and sea salt. Now, the claims are it balances electrolytes, it boosts energy, and supports adrenal function. First of all, I measure fasting cortisol levels every three months in all of my patients. And I think out of the 10,000 or so patients that I've measured this on, I've maybe seen six people with adrenal fatigue with low cortisol levels. It's, quite frankly, an incredibly rare phenomenon. As I've talked about in the energy paradox, what most people who are suffering from adrenal fatigue, they actually have adrenal hormone resistance, which will not be fixed by a miracle adrenal cocktail. It has to do with time-restricted eating, intermittent fasting, which I've gone into for the last three books. Please don't waste your time or your money with adrenal cocktails. They're not needed, they don't work. Fix your deep adrenal resistance and you'll be amazed how much energy you have. Number six, the sleepy girl mocktail. All right, what is that? Well, the recipe is ice, tart cherry juice, magnesium, sp sparkling water, and or poppy soda. Well, people are saying that it helps them fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. Well, believe it or not, magnesium is really good at that. Believe it or not, tart cherry juice is really good at that. And I've done YouTube videos about why that works. But, spoiler alert, tart cherry juice is loaded with sugar. Tart cherry juice has 31 grams of carbohydrates per eight ounces. Now, if you do the math, there's four grams of carbohydrates in a teaspoon of sugar. So that's about seven teaspoons of sugar that you're having before you go to bed. Not exactly what you want to help your brain out through the night. On the other hand, you must use tart cherry extract where the sugar has been removed. And there are some good clinical trials looking at tart cherry extract for promoting sleep. Now, sparkling soda is great. As you know, I'm a big fan of San Pellegrino and other sparkling sodas. Among other reasons is that the CO2 contained in sparkling beverages, carbonated beverages, may actually promote sleep. But please stay away from the tart cherry juice. Number seven, oat zempic. Wow, is this a trending topic. Well, what you do is you put oats and water and add some lime juice and put it in a blender. And the claims are just absolutely hilariously ridiculous. 
It can help you lose up to 40 pounds in two months. Uh, spoiler alert, you do not want to lose 40 pounds in two months. The vast majority of the weight you lose, if you lose it that fast, will be muscle mass. And you don't want to lose muscle. The other thing that will happen to you based on the trials in human beings in the Arizona desert in the Biosphere 2 experiment is you will be awash in heavy metal and other environmental toxins if you lose weight that fast. Number two, I've written and now new studies have shown that almost all of our routes in the United States are contaminated with not only a glyphosate, Roundup, but also a herbicide which is banned by the EPA to be used on oats. But this herbicide is known to cause cancer and birth defects. And now all oats tested in the United States have presence of this herbicide. So if you want to toxify yourself, expose yourself to Roundup and herbicides, then oat zempic is the way to go. There are far better ways to actually support healthy weight management. Have a slug of apple cider vinegar in the morning or before meals. Make my balsamic healthy soda, my fake Coke, where you put balsamic vinegar in San Pellegrino water. Soak some basil seeds in water and have a basil seed cocktail or a basil seed pudding. There's recipes for basil seed pudding in my books. Better yet, practice time-restricted eating. Shorten your eating window eventually to around six to eight hours per day. Those are the healthy ways to lose weight. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. So please, I know a whole lot about colostrum. And the idea that you are going to get any benefit from colostrum is not true.